This is not financial advice. I just hope you watch Oven Miss Baby because it's about to get hot in the kitchen. Now somebody said, Keenan, did you get copyright striked on the music? And guess what, family? Oven Mitt, check. Let me see if you got them on. Let me see if you got them on. Okay, you got them on. But if you can't handle the heat of these hot stocks, then stay out of the kitchen and consider investing in the index funds. You know they try to copyright strike your boy, and I'm not having that. But let's talk about it. The first banger on the list is the one, the only, AMC Entertainment, ticker symbol AMC. Now, AMC is currently $37 a share. It's the weekend, so the numbers is the same, baby. Major salute to y'all. I hope you're having a good weekend. Take a look at this. It's $37 a share. It's down 2.9% on a day. And after hours, it's up 0.7%. However, on the year, this is up over 814%. Let's go. And let's update on the call options that we did last week like we always do. So if you don't know, we just recently ran a call option on Apple. Apple, the stock, went up like, what, 5%? But we got in on a call right on time and ran it straight up 74%. Got in, got out, got money. Now, we're running another play. If you're on the Discord, you're probably already in it. And let's talk about it. If you want to be up on the Discord, hit that link in the top comment, baby. We're going to welcome you with open arms. Discord family in a building. Now, let's get it going. What's going on with AMC? I want to give a shout out to my guy, London786. Major salute, big dog. But he said this, and he sent me all of these documents, but shout out to you again. So, let's go through them because this is actually great, solid news for AMC, and we have not talked about this, and I want to talk about it with the family. Here we go. So now, the House of Representatives in the United States, they were looking over this, and it says, the following bill passed the committee with a vote of 27 to 22. So even this bill going through the committee, guess what? People were on the fence about it, but wait till you hear what it was. You're going to think, wow, y'all was on the fence about that? But take a look. It says, the first thing, there are two major items. At the top, we got the Short Sale Transparency Market Fairness Act. What's important about this? This is when they're going to shorten the reporting period for large institutions who have to report quarterly, and they're going to change that to reporting monthly. And then they want to expand what they report. So usually they just have to report their long positions, right? But with this, they would expand the list to include derivatives. For example, their short positions. What money are you making on shorting stocks and all kind of things like that? And then they would have to report it directly to the SEC. Why is this important? This is important because a company like Citadel, allegedly, hypothetically, right? Nobody's trying to get sued. They have a long position, stocks that they're holding long term of $35 billion. But we now know that they have a short position that they don't really have to report yet, unless this goes through, of about $200 billion and even more than that. So they look like a smaller fish than they actually are. But let's look at the next item on the list. And it says, to amend the Security Exchange Act of 1930. Four, not 1974, not 1994, 1934. Your grandparents are probably just born around that time, family. That's just crazy that they got to amend this part now. Let's keep looking at it. It says, to prohibit trading ahead by market makers. Now, if you go into the purple, it says, to prohibit market makers from trading ahead, basically of you and me, the retail traders. So, why is it important? Let me tell you, you know how I get with the analogies. I want you to understand this fully on a level that everybody can understand. So I'm going to tell you about how market makers are doing something that the politicians are now saying, OK, this is enough. You've been doing this since 1934. It's about time, almost 100 years later, that we try to amend the rule. Take a look at this. Remember just in 2020 when the pandemic was going and it was going strong and it was just kind of getting on board, actually. And then, you know what? All of the toilet paper, hand sanitizer, everything was running low. Guess what? The moment that somebody passed away, may they rest in peace. And let's go to the facts. It says the coroner, the first U.S. death occurred in early February of 2020. And this is according to the Central or the Center for Infectious Disease and Research. Right. Guess what happened as soon as that happened? Somebody ran to the warehouse, to the store, to Target, to Walmart, loaded up on all of the hand sanitizer, specifically this person here. His name is Matt. And he picked up 18,000 bottles of hand sanitizer and stockpiled them, right? With the intention of selling it because he knew that everybody else would want to buy it and then the price of it would go up, right? So when you look at the price of the hand sanitizer, the regular price, it was about 75 cents. And then as soon as the first person passed away, this dude ran allegedly, right? Nobody trying to get sued. Over and bought all of them. He got ahead of all of us. And then next thing you know, He's trying to sell them all for $70 each, every single one of them, 
according to the Wall Street Journal that he reported this to. And then look at this. If he was selling every one of them for $70, he would have turned an $18,000 investment if he bought it for $1, let's say. He would have turned that into a $1.2 million flip. But what's crazy is the government, they stepped in immediately. And I want you to pay attention. They didn't wait from 1934 all the way until 2021 to try to amend this. They jumped right in. Watch this. It says that he got a notice from the attorney general for a cease and desist for deceptive and unfair practices, right? Kind of like on the stock market, deceptive and unfair practices. And it said that they basically did this and sent this to him on March 14th. I just literally showed you that he was doing this since February and already just one month later, even less than a month totally, that they, they got in there and then they said, you know what, enough is enough. Watch this. It then said that he couldn't sell the 18,000 bottles of the sanitizers, none of them, he couldn't sell them. So then the attorney general of Tennessee literally went down and helped him to load the truck, basically because they thought this was out of hand and they went down and they were saying enough is enough. Now, let's look at Citadel Securities and see how this is exactly the same thing. Watch this. But it takes 100 years to get these kind of rules changed. So Citadel Securities is a legal global market maker. So what they can do is they can get ahead of us if they know that we are all going to buy, let's call it AMC, for example. Let's say that they are like a warehouse and let's say that they are selling hand sanitizer. So then they know that we are all going to come up in there and we keep ordering online. All of us just ordering online hand sanitizer. We ready to buy it. But then they say, "Ooh." We should now buy some hand sanitizer since all of these orders are coming in. So then we have it and then they raise the price for us. So then watch this. It's literally like this. It says Citadel Securities is particularly dominant in retail orders. They have 46% of the entire market, according to Bloomberg, a very reliable source. Now, this means they basically have half of all of the retail orders, no matter what platform you're on. So some of them, like Fidelity, for example, you could choose the one that you don't want to get routed to Citadel. You could actually choose that, but it's extremely hard to not go through Citadel. It's extremely hard, but if you could try your best, then you do what you do. It's up to you. So now, I want you to think of this. Imagine that you order with Robinhood, Webo, Public, any of these apps, any of these apps or any of these brokers, you order all of us, the apes. We order about, let's call it, 4 million shares of AMC or even 100 million shares of AMC, all of us. We just loading up billions of dollars. They get all of the orders and then they say, oh, we got a billion dollars in buys coming in. So then what they'll do is they'll put your orders on pause and then they'll go load up on their own position and then they'll let your buys come in and then your buys will raise their position up way high and then the government is trying to say this is not right what we want to do is make it so that you cannot get in ahead of all of the retail buyers but remember what's wrong with this why did it take a hundred years almost to get this going when other things are corrupt and deceitful and all of these guess what they just jump in and immediately get it going family but let's get to the next banger on the list and the next banger on the list is pinterest i want you to understand something family pinterest came down 18 percent just just on friday but in the last week it came down 22 percent look at this steep overreaction this is called look at this steep drop why is it overreaction? Because Pinterest is still a banger and it's up 76% this year, even after that. Now, take a look at this. It says Pinterest fell 18.2%, which was the second worst day ever that it had after its earnings show weak user engagement and two analysts downgraded it. However, they only downgraded it a little bit. They basically said, let's look at the price targets right now. They said it's going to 72, everybody two days ago. They said it's going to 77, 74, 75, 70, 72, all of these great price targets. Why are they giving these price targets? There's even a price target of $84, family, but they were a little higher before the engagement came down some. The only reason the engagement came down some is because the pandemic was kind of letting up just a bit so people could get out of their house and they weren't using Pinterest in record numbers anymore. But I want you to see this, even though and this is how we know this is overreaction. Even though the user engagement came down some, on paper it looked bad, but watch this, family. Let's look at the expected earnings per share versus the earnings per share. Pinterest knocked earnings out of the park. They expected to get 0.13 cents per share, or actually 0.13 cents a share. Actually, yeah, just 13 cents a share. I'm saying it wrong. You know, we keep it real, we keep it raw. And then they actually got 25 cents a share, which means they basically doubled the earnings that they got 
on this quarter. That's absolutely crazy. This is a banger. And we looking to load up and take this straight to the promised land, baby. I see you there. But if you can't handle the heat of these hot stocks, then stay out of the kitchen and consider investing in index funds. Discord family, I see you there. I love y'all. Take care.